It was about this time that the pigs suddenly moved into the farmhouse and took up their residence there. Again, the animals seemed to remember that a resolution against this had been passed in the early days. And again, Squealer was able to convince them that this was not the case. It was absolutely necessary, he said, that the pigs, who were the brains of the farm, should have a quiet place to work in. It was also more suitable to the dignity of the elite of the leader, for of late he had taken to speaking of Napoleon under the title of leader. To live in a house than to, to live in a mere sty. Nonetheless, some of the animals were disturbed when they heard that the pigs not only took their meals in the kitchen and used the draw room, the drawing room as a recreation room, but also slept in beds. Boxer passed it off as usual with, Napoleon is always right. But Clover, who thought she remembered a definitive rule against beds, went to the end of the barn and tried to puzzle, puzzle up the seven commandments, uh, which were inscribed there. Finding herself unable to read more than the individual letters, she fetched Muriel. Muriel, she said, read me the fourth commandment. Does it not say something about never sleeping in beds? Uh, with some difficulty, Muriel, Muriel spelt it out. It says, quote, no animal shall sleep in a bed with sheets, unquote, she announced finally. It's George Orwell, Animal Farm. Wow. Ah, the prophecy of Orwell. Prophecy of Orwell. Then and now. Right. So what is he talking about? I think it's obvious, right? Moving the goalpost. They're moving the goalpost again on us, right? So I'll talk about, um, talk about Julian Assange a little bit. Talk about Yellow Vest 22. And uh, I don't know, whatever else comes up. So, 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 Orwell, so Orwell describes, Marcus Conti reporting. Orwell describes a dystopian place where rules are created, constitution. The seven commandments are written on the wall for all the pigs, for all the animals of the world, for all the animals of Jones's farm to see and follow and abide, leaders included. But as time moves on, the goalpost changes. The leaders become more equal than others. Right? They become, they become the leaders, whatever that means. But you see what's happening, right? Like, like the rules change. The rules change to, to suit the, the temperature of the leaders. They become more privileged, more outlandish in their desire for power and control. Right? You know, you're seeing it, Julian Assange's case is... is it's almost picture perfect where, I mean, there's so many examples. He, they've reduced him now to a, he's a sex criminal and a jail jumper, a bail jumper. Ah, that's how they want us to remember Julian Assange, the, the hero who published, the publishing hero who published documents about American war crimes in Afghanistan and Iraq. A hero who told us what was going on inside the DNC when our own people wouldn't tell us. When they were lying to us, we got a hold of their, their, real, their real conversations to each other and we learned that the Democratic Party is a fraud and a fake. They hold fake elections. Right? We learned all that from the, from the, from the, the, the noble one known as Julian Assange, St. Julian. We'll call him. And it's also a testament, a, 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 a testament to the to the First Amendment and the ability of this country to acknowledge the need for a free press, to hold power accountable. That's what Julian Assange is. But what is he reduced to now, right? Anyone who's telling you, as I said yesterday, anybody who's telling you that, that this is about a 
a crime where uh, a, a something else, it's not about publishing. Oh, no, no, what he did was he, he aided and abetted a source to crack a code, to crack a password. He was a, he was a, a password cracker. He was cracking. Right? They don't want you to talk about They want you to. They want. They want it to become ugly. Right? Negative. Right? Dystopia. That's what it is. Right? Orwell. Orwell told us that this is what's going to happen. He went on in 1984. But Animal Farm is, you know, here we are on Jones's farm. Right? We're trapped on Jones's farm. We, we, we give power to the pigs, to to help us will work while you lead. And then they, they say, okay, keep leading, keep, keep working, and we're, we're, we're leading ourselves to the rich house. It's omnipotent. I mean, I see, you know, people like, I see people getting all worked up about it, you know, in independent media. How dare MSNBC? I watch Jimmy Dore, who I love. Jimmy Dore's the, the man, right? Whenever Jimmy Dore, whenever someone speaks my name in, in the same sentence as Jimmy Dore, I mean, I'm just, I'm thoroughly flattered, you know, when something like that happens. But I, I think that Jimmy Dore got all worked up. He left the Young Turks, finally. And he's, he, gets, he gets so emotionally, he's so emotionally involved and so irate about how, how dare MSNBC and Rachel Maddow and and, and Chris Hayes and the rest of those idiots public, talk down to Assange. How dare them not defend... How dare, dare them not defend Julian Assange in his time of need? The great publisher. The great journalist. And I just look at it and I say, well, that's, that's business as usual. That shouldn't be... Mainstream media and the characters in it care nothing about truth or justice there. There are people that go to school, they go to journalism school, they're taught, this is what you do, this is what you say. And you have a good career and you have a nice life for yourself. You know, you live like Rachel Maddow, you live $6 million a year. Ah, you live up in the Upper West Side. Ah, you go to, you know, you go to a lesbian bar, New York. You get your private chauffeur to chauffeur you around. That, you're a celebrity. You have all the all the Washington elites kissing your ass. Oh, Rachel Maddow, so brilliant! Uh, it's not that's not hard to figure out. Uh, it's the money that that corrupts them. It's the it's the um, subservientness. Right? If you want to tell the truth, go ahead and tell it. Why do you need MSNBC to do it? Right? <laughs> All you need is a joystick and a, and a quiet park to walk around and tell you the truth. But nonetheless, nonetheless, people are all worked up about it and trying to figure it out when it's really just very, very simple, very, very simple human nature. Human nature of greed, internal suffering. Uh, desire. Yeah. A lot of those, a lot of the answers to the outside world are very clear on the inside. That's why when you're grounded in truth, why is someone who's with all the tools that they're, all the resources at their disposal, like MSNBC or CNN, why are they not able to get the, get it right, get the story right about Assange, about Russia, about Yellow Vest, about Venezuela? And someone who's grounded in the truth walking around with a joystick in the park or a guy like Jimmy Dore telling the truth out of his garage in California uh, can get it right every time. Because one is grounded in the truth and in the moment and not, and not swayed by the, the, um, the storyline, the fake storyline. If you're grounded in the truth, you see the fake storyline coming. You know, with Assange, right? Why were they quiet when Ecuador... When Ecuador gave him citizenship and asylum and diplomatic immunity, 
and then suddenly revoked it. And for seven years, while it was in place, why did Britain prevent him from getting to an airport so he could get out of the embassy? Why was the media silent on that? Because, because, because their sponsors and their donors say, no, 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 Assange is bad. Assange cheated us in 2016 and beyond and might do it again. Julian Assange also holds the key to the 2016 election that we know was 100% 100 percent an inside job that nobody there was no russia see that's what that's what the Mueller report wants to wants to double down on the fact that russia had something to do with the 2016 election and julian assange has told us otherwise that his source was not russia was in fact he alluded to a 27 year old in in washington dc who was gunned down seth rich he did it he did it publicly on on a um Dutch, Dutch uh, news show, remember? I showed that clip before. Foggy day in New York, see the fog? So, I don't know what else to say. So, I mean, yellow vests, right? Yellow vests are still holding their ground. Love the yellow vests, right? They're out there carrying on. Emmanuel Macron still holding on, less than 20%, maybe 20% approval rating. Fucking people hate him, right? They hate Macron. It's got to go in France, right? People are holding in there, holding their ground. Spin Machine, Pompeo, Bolton, and the rest of them still spinning the, the bullshit in Venezuela, trying to say that that that, that the, the president-elect... Uh, is is a, a usurper? All right, get rid of him. Put in Juan Guardo. Maduro, usurper. They're still running that shit, right? Same swamp there. It's the same swamp trying to trying to round up trying to round up uh, Julian Assange. But the but the leader is always right. Remember what Orwell told us? You'll always have that crew of people. And if it's you, wake up. The leader is always right. Napoleon is always right. Who, whose name can we put in place of that right now? Well, you figure that out. It's not always right. It never was right <laughs> in this case. It was obvious. The real leader was Snowball, you remember? And Snowball got chased off the farm because he was chasing the villain out. And then the usurpers came behind him and, scared, and, and sent him sent them out the door. That's what you have right now. You, that's the case you have right now. Yeah. So moving the goalposts, I guess that's what this is about, right? You got, you got these... Um, it's like history keeps... Re- repeating itself right in every situation it's the same it's the 99 percent being ruled by a ruling class of one percent they put their heads down and work and then before you know it they're being taken advantage of screwed over we want to live in a world that's um more honest a world driven by truth and not bullshit propaganda and and lies and 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 uh, do we want a YouTube full of cat videos or do we want YouTube full of truth tellers? Because if you do cat videos, you're really, you're pretty popular. If you want to be a PewDiePie and talk to I don't know who, you got you got a hundred million hundred million views with 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 uh, YouTube throttling you to the top. But if you tell the truth about the oligarchy, the things that people really need to hear, uh, they, they drop you down. You're a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> they try to starve you out, make you go away. Solitary confinement. <laughs> so there is hope. I mean, YouTube is just a. I, I predict in ten years it won't even be rel- It won't even be 
relevant anymore. It'll be kind of like a museum. Ah, the good old days. Good old days of YouTube, you remember? When YouTube had all the power and the people. <laughs> It'll happen, right? It always happens, and the internet's only 30 years old. Remember MySpace? You remember MP3 was gonna, you know, the fucking music industry hated them, took them down, and then they then and then and then what happened? The the music industry realized that they couldn't stop the power of the digital media, and they joined ranks. They said, "Okay, YouTube, pay us, pay us per click," <laughs> and they like that. So there is a move right now. Uh, who knows if it'll be valid? There's Twitch making a making a making a move to the t you know making a move for the uh, for the for the people. There's other ones that are very complicated like Bit 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 Shoot and but the big one looks like um, a purely live D live D live. I got my link down below. I haven't done anything with it yet, but I certainly <laughs> I certainly grabbed my name in the pile. Right? D live could be something something important, right? I don't stream much on YouTube because at all really because I still have every video I've ever made. Every single video I have is documented and and saved and in the time where where YouTube becomes a relic I'll have everything even if they take me down I'll still have I'll have the ability to somehow get a website together and put it all right back up. But when you stream you have the you you're not it, first of all when you hit that save button or end button you're not even sure if it if it saves. You know what I mean? I don't want to lose anything. I don't want to lose any any documentation of this this precious time in our history. Right? So stay healthy. Stay happy. Meditate. That's what I do. Right? Get up early, walk in the park. Drinking drug free. No caffeine, no junk food, nothing. <laughs> Go vegan. Save the animals. Last year I got poison ivy in this park. I ain't touching shit this year, man. That was itchy. The worst. I don't know, man. Poison ivy is, a, is brutal. I don't know if it was poison ivy or poison oak. There's like three different kinds of poison plants that grow in, in the uh, parks of New York. No warning sign either, man. You touch it, you're, you're screwed. You're on your own. You got a, you got a, you got two months of itch to look forward to. Right. So what will happen with Julian Assange? Just in a, as a summation, my prediction is that um, it's it's really hard to say. You know, the political climate in England is that of get him and hand him over to the. Americans. That's uh, Theresa May, the politics there. It's all politics. It's not justice. It's not a judicial. It's politicians deciding. Because right? they're going to get a favor. They, hand, they do the right thing. They, because you can't say that if you don't hand them over, then you're saying that Assange is, 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 is right and the Americans are wrong. Right? And that's not, that's not good for... That's not good for... for <laughs> That's not good for, for uh, British polit politicians, right? Because right? Assange has got nothing to offer. He's a little guy. He's a little publisher guy, right? But maybe, 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 just maybe, hopefully, he'll, he'll serve his time for bail jumping, which is actually illegal because the country that he, see he sought asylum in handed him over to the hostile nation that he was trying to get away from. Which is a violation of international law. There's, they're not even following the rules anymore. The rules are off the table. They're changing the whole paradigm, trying to make journalism illegal. Right? That's really what it is, you know? Keep changing the rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get a couple of idiots that'll say, oh, no, no, this is not about, it's not about speaking up and First Amendment and, and, and telling the truth. That's not what this is. This guy's a, this guy's a code cracker. He's a cracker. Changing the rules, changing the, moving the goalposts. You go to kick, you remember Charlie Brown? He went to kick and Lucy pulled the ball out from under him, fell on his ass. Keep moving the ball, can't kick. Right. 
So maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe he'll do his time in England. I don't know, 30 days, 90 days, because he's Julian Assange. Six months for bail jumping. And then the British courts will look at it and say that this is not really a crime, that there's nothing here. There's nothing to this. And let him out the door or deport him. Deport him back to Australia. Julian Assange is not a poor person. I think he's got a million dollars. And he also has international support. He'll be a rock star in no time. And he'll have a life, you know. He'll have his life back again, you know, and he could talk about it. So maybe that's the best outcome. But the Americans don't want that to happen. They want to they put him in a little box, a little, little concrete cell for the rest of his life so that you never hear the truth, so that the truth is, 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 is permanently vilified, made ugly, the ugly truth of Julian Assange. And anybody who steps over this line will end up in a cell right next to him. Hmm. Dystopia. That's what it's really about. There's a lot of people in my park today. So enjoy the rest of the day. Marcus Conti reporting.